So you might have seen from a previous video that we are developing a Connect4 robot that plays a Connect4 robot game that plays Connect4. Got a couple of tubes here. We were just trying to test out the right ID. This is the one with the magic ID. Um, oh, look at the fluid dynamics in there. That's lovely. Ooh, that's going to be lovely when it plays the game. So Connect4 game. Check out the other video to get an overview of it. But effectively, balls go into tubes and that is the gameplay area. So why are we here today? Well, we are designing it obviously in 3D, because we need to 3D print everything. We are modeling everything. We're using SketchUp. We're using Reality Composer Pro 2, which is the beta release version. And obviously we're using uh, the Apple Vision Pro and we're using Stageit, um, our own product, to kind of mock it all up. And I wanted to put together a little video of how we're going about doing that. It's surprising how easy it is to do, certainly using Stageit to bring all the components together to get an, a 3D object that fully animates with real physics so you can actually mock up and design your mechanical articulated 3D projects. So if we first take a look inside SketchUp, this is the concept design which is built to scale has predominantly kind of the key features and ideas that we need, but is certainly by no means the final design. This tube section, the bit in blue, that bit is now to scale based on the tubes that we are going to use. And what I would like to do to the model is add the little doors that are gonna to open to allow the balls to fall in the tube. So I'm measuring here the size of the tubes and that's a 50 mil square. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through how I create the door in SketchUp, animate it using Reality Composer Pro. So this is the desktop version of SketchUp. Uh, I'm just gonna hide the lady here. So I'm gonna draw myself a 48 mil by 48 mil square first, because I want that to be a couple of mil uh, or one mil tolerance around that outside edge. So um, I've got myself a square, gonna zoom extents. I'm gonna extrude it by 10 millimeters. So there's my object. What I need to do in order for it to animate properly in Reality Composer Pro, I need to make sure the object's origin is where I kind of want the pivot point to be. The easiest way to animate stuff is to set the origin of the object you're animating, set the, the origin at the center of the, of the pivot point, if you like. So it's much easier to prepare that up front than to try and hack that later with the origin in the wrong place. So actually, this is really important. So what I do here is I double click on the object and I get into the object editing. I have to select it all because it's no longer a, uh, a group. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm moving the object here to the actual origin that I want it. So I want the little door to pivot from the top. So I'm just gonna set the origin there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it out a bit because I want the pivot to be slightly further back so that it sort of lifts it away as if it was actually hinged. There you go. That's exactly where I want the object, beneath the plane with the origin at the top in the middle, about 10 mil from the edge. The final step before I take it out of SketchUp and into Reality Composer Pro is I need to give it a material, otherwise it will come through hot pink. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> give it a gray material um, using the paint bucket here, which is what the rest of the model is, is designed with. So here we are in Reality Composer Pro version two. So this is still in beta release, but it will be out soon for everyone. So this is the main model, which we've already done some prep work on and created collision objects, which is what all that blue stuff is. It just means that the objects we add and stage it don't roll through the things that are lined in blue. They, they are walls, they are physical walls. So the first thing we wanna do is create a new scene because we wanna create that new door. So this is the scene where we're gonna set up all the animation that we need to make this work. So we're gonna to go to the project browser. I'm gonna drag in my file that I created uh, and I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna add the scene which adds it right into the center. Now I'm gonna adjust the scale. Um, it always brings it in at about 10%. So I'm gonna make that one to one. Uh, and then I'm just going to orientate it in the scene the way I want it. So uh, I want to rotate it, flatten it around. So I kind of get it close with the tool, with the grabber tool, but then I set it um, exactly right in the in the top right settings there. So first things we want to do is add physical properties to this paddle so that um, elements and items in stage it with physical properties interact with it and don't just go through it. So I'm going to select the very root level thing, which is called new when you export it from SketchUp. I'm going to add collision to that. Uh, and I'm just going to use the default settings. They're all set up correctly. And um, you've got certain collision shapes, box, capsule, and sphere, but box is exactly fine for this. And I'm going to add a physics body. Uh, this is new in Reality Composer Pro, the collision and the physics bodies being separate. So I want to detect continuous collision because I want it to always be calculating when it's touching things. I'd want to disable turn, um, affected by gravity. And importantly, if it was just a, a static object that was a wall, 
I would leave it a static mode. But actually, because this is going to be moving, I need it to be kinematic. Um, I need it to detect collision while it moves. Um, and I, I'm going to set a bit of friction and a bit of dynamic friction uh, and, and, a, and a little bit of restitution. But pretty much everything else we can just leave as the default settings. So the next thing I want to do is I want to animate it so that door opens. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create a timeline. So I've got a new timeline here and I'm going to go ahead and add a spin uh, action to that from the actions panel on the right. Now you need to choose the target object, which in this case is the door. So that's the item that's called new in this particular instance. And then I want to set the amount of rotation uh, and I want to basically rotate it 90, 90 degrees. It deals in full rotation. So you're not setting the degrees here. You're just setting the decimal of, of the rotation. That's going to be 0.25. I've gone ahead and set that to 0.25 and we'll just quickly preview that. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that spin element uh, so that it closes after a few seconds. About seven second mark, I think, sounds about right. And the only thing I'm going to change is the direction of travel. So I'm going to make it go clockwise. Uh, and now if we preview that, door opens, stays open for five seconds, six seconds, five seconds, and door closes. Beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and rename that now. Um, open and close. So that timeline is called the open and close and that's what manages the door opening. Now we need some way to trigger that action. So I'm gonna to go to the root level here and I'm gonna add what's known as a behavior. And we've got a number of options on tap, on collision, on added to scene or on custom notification. But well, we want on tap and we've only got one timeline. So on tap, I want to run that timeline. That means when that object is in a scene, when it's tapped either with a pinch or a physical tap, it'll animate, so that's perfect. The other thing I thought might be nice is these doors are sitting on top of these tubes, so it'd be really cool if a light shone down the tube as the door opened so that it kind of highlighted as the ball goes in and closes off. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, add a light, uh, and I'm adding a spotlight, and in order to work out which way it's shining, the quickest thing I found to do is just to add a, a, a primitive cube and work out in which direction your light is shining, then you can orientate your light appropriately. So in this case, it's, it looks like it's kind of shining sort of behind the object. So I rotate it round, uh, make sure it's pointing down. Quickest way to do that is just to move the cube down to confirm that it's there. And then I'll go ahead and uh, uh, deactivate that cube. Now I'm using the Apple Vision Pro as my screen. So you can just easily preview what you're going to do by clicking center device. We just want to tap it once and it comes up halfway. So that looks perfect. Now we won't see the effect of the light because there's nothing for all the light to hit. But one thing I will notice is that if I put this in the model now, that light will always be on. So we need to turn that light on and off. I want that light to only work when the door is activated. So that's relatively easy to do. First, I'm going to turn the light off when it comes into the scene. So I'm gonna add a new timeline. And I'm gonna call that light off. On that timeline, I'm going to put a disable entity command. We're going to put that right at zero. I need to come up here. I'm going to, need to select my entity. And it's going to be my spotlight. Done. So light off will do that. And now I need that to play right at the beginning. So I'm going to go to my route where I added my behaviors. I'm going to add on added to scene so that when the model is added to any scene, it will run this. Uh, and now I just want to turn that light on as part of the open and close. So when the door opens and when the door closes, I want the light to turn on and off. So um, it's going to be straightforward. Um, I'm going to grab the enable entity action, put it onto a new timeline there. I'm going to choose the object. I want it to turn off at the end. Disable entity. Pop that at the end of the animation there. Perfect. Just going to choose my light. Done. Nice. So now we should have everything we need. We should have the door opening, closing, the light turning on and off, and the light turning off when we come in. It would be kind of cool to have a, an audio play, so I, I downloaded a, a servo sound. So I'm going to add that in. I'm going to go ahead and select my object, and I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to add an audio component. Audio library component is what I'm going to add. And then I'm going to go ahead and add into that the servo sound that I downloaded just now. And so now what I want to do is I want to play that sound when the door opens and closes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag a play audio command into my open and close timeline. 
I want the the door to be the emitter, emitter and I want it to play the servo sound that I've just added. Uh, and then I want that to kind of play about the right length. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that action. And I'm going to go ahead and put it at the other end as well so that it plays the same sound. So let's see how that looks on the device. So I'm going to go ahead and save and send. It should reload right here. <laughs> so that looks really good. That looks like it's going to work just fine. Now what I want to do is add that to the project, to the Stage It project. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that audio file. What's really nice from here is I can just tap on here and I can save that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open Stage It. I'm going to go to my Harper Adams project. I'm going to go ahead and keep it animated when it is. I'm going to place my scene. So I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to add an asset. Add a model, add files. And if I go to recents, it will be the top one in the recents. It's that one there. Okay, good. Okay, let's see if that works better. I'm going to go ahead and find control it. Beautiful. So I just need to add the rest of those doors. Nice. That worked. <laughs> 